Hey everybody, Saggy Crayon here talking about the next part of the Isle Ward tutorial. We're talking about currencies today. There's a couple different currencies in the Isle Ward verse. Uh, there has been some rumblings of changing the currency around, but as of right now, uh, let's do a quick overview of the existing currency structure of Isle Ward, which includes three main different types of currencies. First type of currency is gold. How do you get gold? You go to any shop in town and you sell something to that shop. You can sell gear you don't want, you can sell runes you don't want, uh, sell stuff in town, that's the only way to get gold. Now I'm not just gonna leave you with that, I'm gonna give you a couple tips about how I manage the gold uh, that I generate, and that is I only sell runes. Usually I get my runes from Mog, level 20 runes. I'll get my runes from QQing uh, different parts of the map. I will salvage blue runes, purple runes, legendary runes if I don't like them for magical essence, but common runes and uh, green runes have no value to me and I need to sell something to get gold. Uh, runes sell particularly high in shop, so that is uh, why I sell runes for gold. Now, why do you need gold is probably the more important question. Well, there are a couple places that you can use your gold. For new players, that would be the rune shop in town. Let's go ahead and ride down there to give you an idea of where the rune shop is. You go into the rune shop as a level 3, level 4 player, level 5 player, and boom, I would like to buy some runes and they have all kinds of runes for you to check out. The blue runes are owl runes, the red runes are bear runes, the green runes are lynx runes, and purple, uh, this is a strength and int sort of combo rune. But you use gold, uh, he's charging 30 gold, it's relatively cheap, that's the way to use it. Uh, another way to, another place to use your gold as a new player is at the Hermit Shack. You can buy sticks at the Hermit Shack, you can buy some low level gear at the Hermit Shack, perfect for brand new players. Other than that, uh, you can go to the potion shop in town uh, and buy some vials for making some potions, but those aren't those concepts aren't really fleshed out yet, so typically newer players, you're going to want to use the rune shop and check out the hermit shack. For experienced players, we're talking about level 20 players, the church is really where you can use this gold. I'd like to browse your wares. The church sells squiggle buffed gear all of this gear that you can purchase let me buy the cheapest the cheapest thing here for an example for 700 gold i'll buy some boots everything you buy from uh the church gives you a chance to summon a critter uh when you uh, defeat an animal i'm salvaging this because <laughs> i don't need it um the critter is a squiggle that's awesome uh but really it's all about the cowl of obscurity. To buy a cowl, to use a cowl, you do have to have certain gate, gate reputation uh, to even purchase this stuff. But you can buy this and you can see that it heals you when you do a critical strike. Really good gear, uh, something to use your gold on. Another place to use gold is going to be in the crystal caves. I have my character's saggy temple here showing off the big area of effect smoke bomb. About to check out Yala, see if Yala has anything interesting for me to purchase. And Yala only has amulets. Why are these amulets special? For 2200 you can buy this one, 1847 gold you can buy this one. I'll buy one, let me check my gold, oof, running a little low. I'll buy one just for the sake of the example here. For 1800 gold, you can get a lightning bolt neck with a chance on a critical strike to give a chance for a lightning bolt to hit. The lightning bolt is arcane damage, I believe, so a little bit cooler for owls to get the uh, lightning because it will all sort of um, combine together for larger attacks. All right, back to the saggy crayon action here. So that hopefully gave you a clean rundown on the gold currency system. You sell items to get gold and you can buy uh, unique items with that gold. Uh, that you get by selling unwanted runes. What else do we got? We have cards. 
quick overview of the different kinds of cards that we have. Keep a small stash of these cards. My favorite card, the best card in the game, is a Tradesman's Pride card. What you can do with 10 of these, you can see it says the size that you need for turning these in. For 10 Tradesman Prides cards, you can exchange these in the sewer with the Shady Dealer for five random idols. We're gonna get into idols in a second here, but it gives you five random, random idols. Idols are needed and used for making new gear, making the high level gear that you see the uh, pro players using. The other heirloom card, this is the card you exchange for getting a level 10 perfect ring. A perfect ring really just means the stat lines are maxed out on the random stats you'll get on this ring, but the downside here, it's a level 10 ring. So getting a maxed out level 10 stat line, really only nice for maybe a QQ item or a, I don't know, maybe a poison resistance item because certain stats max out at level 20. So you really need to get rings to level 20 and re-roll them for maximum best possible stats. Uh, but your other heirloom is good for low level players. If you're level 10, level 12, level 15, use these cards, get some rings, see if they help you. The Benthic card can be uh, gathered at the estuary. So cards, this card you're not going to see for quite a little bit until you're a late game player. Benthics can be exchanged at the Shady Dealer in the sewer, just like all of these cards. Four, uh, a Trident. Uh, a Trident is a, a type of owl weapon. Uh, it gives you a chance to freeze your target or slow down your target. It's a two-handed uh, staff, uh, essentially with a special effect. The Godly Promise cards. These cards, you take six of them and exchange them for a random legendary rarity weapon. This is probably going to be how you get, as a new player, your first legendary weapon. It'll be level 15, so ready to use. Uh, so pretty cool card for lower level players. For higher level players, quick note on this, you want to use Ascension Idols, get it, get it to level 20. L little tip for uh, pro players on this, when you use your Godly Promise cards, always use an Ascension Idol on them to get their level from 15 to 20. Then you augment it. Then if the augs are good, you reroll it. The augs are bad, that's why the Dragon Glass Idols are there. Next card here is the Fangs of Fury. Fangs of Fury can be gathered by farming Stink Tooth. Uh, you may know Stink Tooth from seeing my other video on Saggy Stinko, the, the spotlight video. But Fangs of Fury, you get 20 of them and you can exchange these for a Steel Claw Bite. Uh, that weapon that has been featured in a few of my videos, broken weapon. This is a very valuable card, very tough to get. And the last gambler's card to review is Rune Crafter's Toil. Just like the name suggests, you can get runes from the Rune Crafter's Toil. By submitting three of these cards, I believe you get a level 10 rune. 10 of these cards gets you a level 15 rune. And 30 of these cards gets you a level 20 rune, a maxed out high level rune. Do not get your hopes up when you're exchanging these cards. Just like when you kill a random monster with zero quality uh, stat lines, you're usually going to get a common rune from exchanging these cards. Uh, so probably one of the least exciting cards uh, I would recommend as a low level player. Exchange them uh, as quickly as you can just to get a couple runes in there, uh, just so you can get access to more runes a little bit faster. Alrighty, and the last type of currency in the Isle Ward verse is idols. Idols are the most overpowered things you can have in the game because these, uh, the idols are used to make new gear. I do plan to go into uh, great detail about how to most effectively use the idols, uh, what situations to use them, how to make that high-end, high-end gear. But for now, we're just going to do a quick overview of what the idols do. The uh, most common idol, uh, this is actually used as uh, sort of the uh, baseline uh, trading currency, similar to like the US uses the dollar, Isle Ward uses the unstable idol. Things are priced based on how many unstable idols they would cost. The way to get idols is the same way that you get cards. It is random drops 
from killing monsters. Uh, you want to kill monsters your level to get the maximum chance to get an idol to drop. As long as you kill a monster within five levels of yourself, you get the maximum chance for an idol to drop. So, what do these idols do? What's their unique application? The unstable idol, you can take a piece of gear. Let's look at something random that I have. Let's look at the uh, high XP sickle that I have here. All weapons have three different sections that you will see stat lines. Uh, on the very top of your gear piece, you'll have an intrinsic stat type. For sickles, it's light gained on dealing hit. For uh, a smoky orb, it's dodge. For boots that are steel, it's armor. For sashes, it's maximum mana. Whatever your intrinsic stat line, when you use an unstable idol, you re-roll this line item. So your eight life gained on hits for a level three item, maybe when you use the idol on this piece of gear, maybe that eight becomes a 30. Maybe the eight becomes an eight. Maybe the eight becomes a one. Uh, the whole point is that is going to be affected by the unstable idol. Also, all of your uh, explicit stats, which are in the picture here, everything in the middle there in white, that's your one vitality, 9% XP, your 15 quantity. Those three stat lines in the middle for rare, for, I'm sorry, for epic gear. Uh, well, it's really four stat lines in the middle for epic gear. All of your middle explicit stat lines will also randomly change. Your vitality, your one vitality might become poison resistance. Your XP per kill might become strength or dexterity. It's all completely random because your implicit stat line, your life on hit, it's gonna randomly change value, but the stat line will always be what the bone sickle stat line is. Whereas all of these stats in sort of that middle portion of your gear piece are random. So they're going to randomly change to something. Usually it's a bad roll, usually it's bad stats. You use a couple idols, maybe you'll get that lucky good roll. Then you'll notice the last stats, the last three stats on the very bottom. Uh, for the eternally in, eternal testimony bone sickle, that would be one intellect, four XP per kill, and two dexterity. Dexterity. These green stats are augments. Augments are something that you can do using raw materials like iron for sickles or essence for trinks. You use raw materials to augment your gear. Unstable idols will not affect your augmented stats. So if I use an unstable idol to re-roll the implicit and explicit stat lines on this gear piece, the augmented items are not going to change. All right, <laughs> hopefully that was clear. Uh, if not, re-watch that section. Essentially, idols are for randomizing most of the stats, uh, implicit and explicit stats on a gear piece. Awesome. Let's move on to the next idol. That will be the Ascendant Idol. This one's really straightforward, guys. Not very complicated. We'll look at the we'll look at the glove here. You'll notice my glove is level three. An essential an ascendant idol would increase that level. Uh, it would make it increase by one or two. So one idol would turn this level three piece into level four or maybe a level five piece. Uh, you use ten idols on this guy, it might be level twenty. Why would you do that? Uh, you would use an Ascension Idol to get something to level 20 before you use an unstable idol to reroll the stat lines because a level 20 item will have higher possible outcomes for the stats than a level three item. So before you use an unstable idol on any gear piece, make sure it's good, make sure it's worth it, make sure you've ascended that gear piece to level 20. Only disclaimer about this for new players, if you're level 12 and you have a level 12 piece of gear, do not use an ascension idol on it. It will now be level 13 and you can't use it until you level up. So good rule of thumb, make sure you're not uh, affecting yourself as a low level player, but when you're level 20 and you're really making some end game gear, ascend the gear to level 20 before you use unstable idols. Oh, and last quick note on that, because I know people have asked this before. If you use an Ascension Idol, none of your stats are gonna change. 
aside from the level. Uh, to get the stats to change, you need to reroll it. Alrighty, next we have the Bone Idol. The Bone Idol changes the damage for your weapon. Just the damage for your weapon. We're back to looking at Eternal Testimony Bone Sickle. You'll see the damage on the bottom there is 1.61. It is purple damage, which means that's an epic roll. Uh, common damage shows as, uh, you know, white. Uh, magic damage shows as green. Rare is blue. Epic is purple. Legendary is orange. Purple and orange damage rolls are about as good as you can get. Do not use Bone Idols randomizing the damage of something that's already epic or legendary damage. What you're wanna gonna what you're gonna want to use your uh, bone idols for is if you have a really good weapon and the damage is common. Plan to use 20, 30, maybe 40 bone idols to roll that guy over and over and over and over until you get a blue damage, purple damage, uh, orange damage. Uh, expect the damage roll to be comparable to a normal piece, a normal weapon that you find from a normal kill on a monster. It's typically going to be common, so plan to re-roll several times to get a good roll with your bone idol, and do not bone anything that's already good. <laughs> good rule. Your dragon glass idol, probably the most complicated idol of the bunch. The dragon glass idol completely changes the gear piece. Completely changes it. The entire thing as you know it disappears and a new item emerges when you use a dragon glass idol. For example, if we were to take these pants, Virtuous Acumen, and use a dragon glass idol at the shrine on this piece of gear, it's gone. Maybe uh, a boot will pop up. Maybe it'll become an axe. Uh, maybe it becomes another pants. Uh, but whatever it is, it's going to have random intrinsic stat, random uh, explicit or implicit explicit stat lines, and it will no longer have augments. The augments completely disappear. So it's a brand new idol. Uh, what are good situations to use the Dragon Glass idol? That's gonna be if you have a legendary rarity item, because when you Dragon Glass something, the rarity stays. So you Dragon Glass idol something legendary rarity, it stays legendary rarity. Damage is gone. If it has legendary damage, do not expect a random legendary damage item. It'll be a random item. It's the rarity of the gear piece itself that always sticks around. And the level sticks around. If it's a level if it's a level 20 legendary axe and you dragon glass idol on it, it will stay a legendary rarity level 20 something. It's just probably not going to be an axe. And the last idol is a legendary idol. You'll see it's an orange idol. It is the most rare. It costs about 10 unstable idols to purchase or trade for a smoldering idol from another player. Uh, smoldering idols can be uh, received just like any other idol. Random drops from a monster close to your level or using a Trademan Pride card at the sewers to get five random idols. What does a Smoldering Idol do? It removes all the augments from an item. It's pretty broken. So let's look here. What's something that's really, really good? I don't think I have anything really, really good on this character, to be honest. Here we go. So if we look at Hope's Absence, the uh, Implicit stat line, six maximum mana, that, that is what it is. And then we have the explicit stat item, the 14% additional XP per kill. That's really high. Uh, I know uh, as a new player, you probably do not know much about additional XP per kill stat lines. We'll get into that in another video, I'm sure. But that's really good. And then you look at the augments. The augments from, from a sash is when you use the raw material cloth to add additional stat lines called augments to a gear. You've got uh, some augments there, and you'll notice there's 3% additional XP per kill as one of the augs. Now here's the problem. 14% XP kill is huge XP, and for this gear, uh, this specific item, what I'm going for is all XP per kill stat lines. I wanna get that additional XP per kill as high as possible, and the augments are kind of not the best XP. I could use a smoldering idol to remove the augments. 
the 3% XP per kill is removed, the 6 maximum mana is removed, the 2 health regeneration is removed, and it gives me a second opportunity to augment this item and try to get the stats that I was hoping for. Disclaimers on this idol, of course, it's very expensive. You have to be very careful with the smoldering idols that you choose. And of course, once you smold an item, please make sure you ascend it to level 20 so you get the best opportunity for the best augments possible. Alright guys, I hope you uh, took something away from this tutorial. It was a good rundown of gold, what to do with it, uh, idols, cards, what to do with it. Uh, till next time, I appreciate everybody who watches. I appreciate everybody who gives me feedback. Enjoy the day and uh, take care. Like and subscribe. Take care guys. Bye-bye. Oh, how could I forget? There is actually one more type of currency called seafarers marks that is real dollars converted into uh, purchasing cosmetic items uh, the cosmetic items that you purchase are not giving you a stat advantage it is purely cosmetic guys uh, and it's a way to say thank you to the developers uh, who uh, make all Ward what it is and really what it does is uh, help support the game all right gentlemen i appreciate it just like last time like subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.